Hi, we're back on PA Harness Week. And you know, it's no secret that the temperatures have been absolutely sweltering here in the east. As we used to call them, it's a real scorcher. And it's been cold. It's been in excess of 100 degrees. How does that affect racehorses? Well, a lot of thoroughbred tracks, area tracks, Philadelphia Park, um, Penn National, Delaware Park, have actually closed down because they race thoroughbreds. And thoroughbreds are like ballerinas. Harness horses are like war horses. They're tough. They don't shut down harness tracks because of a little hot weather. That's right. You want to find out about the hot weather and what makes harness horses so tough and why this track is open on a hot day in excess of 100 degrees? Well, Sonny, our paddock judge, has the answer in Sonny's world. Thanks, guys. We've talked about racing in the cold, the snow, the rain, the wet. Today, it's a little warm. I'm here with trainer Tyler Raymer. He's going to tell us what it's like to race a harness horse in this hot weather. Tyler? The first thing that we have to do is uh, keep ourselves uh, hydrated. So we do the same thing with the, uh, the horses because like, like we are right now, just standing here, we're into a sweat and, uh, and they're feeling the same way. They'll have fans on them and we try to keep them as cool as possible. And, uh, but also try to keep them uh, hydrated, hydrated beforehand and afterwards. The biggest thing is, is that they're tough enough animals that they'll, uh, they'll take on the uh, elements and perform but uh, after the fact, they need the help to uh, recover. So we just need to uh, make sure that they're getting enough of those uh, electrolytes and fluids back into them. Okay, thanks, Tyler. Back to you guys. I'm Sonny, the paddock judge. Thank you for that, Sonny. And now back to more grand circuit action at Mohegan Sub Pocono Downs. It was Tuesday, race six. Three-year-old Philly Pacers were in action. Ruffles Kiss, a promising daughter of champion White Ruffles with Joe Pavia Jr., was coupled with Windback Patty and Mike Lachance and went off as the one to five chalk. Aspected music was five to one with Eric Adell. Let's see what happens. It's still Ruffles Kiss holding sway. Pavia now asks her for more there. Inside, hello, great mate, getting a real good trip. Stan Windsor fading, moving up aspect of music. At the top of the stretch, it's Ruffles Kiss. She's still clear by about two full lengths. Well, Ruffles Kiss gave him the kiss off and jogged, winning in 151 and four. Hello, great mate, an 18 to one bomber with Jim Morrill Jr. was second. Aspect of music got third. And now Tuesday's race 10, more pacing fillies in action, and he, she is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, and here we've got It's the Lovely, who is the one to five favorite with driver Jeff Gregory in control. Sand Jester, I thought maybe she was the like sister of Shark Jester, but yes, yeah, she's not. But she is trained by Ron Burke and sugar coated, longest shot on the board. But I think she shows some promise in this big field. We'll find out. The half 55 and 2, 28 and 3 second panel. Unforgiving fractions here. It's the lovely. Leads it now on the back stretch by about a length. Stan Jester led just briefly there. Now with the pocket trip. Elegant girl and Tom Jackson trying first over here. Improving there to third. Inside fourth is, is artificial flowers. Following up on the cover outside sugar coated. And you've got naughty indeed. Further back to NF Salsa and Imperial Flower. Three quarters, 124 and 2. 29 even third panel. It's the lovely, leads it by about a length. Sand Jester hasn't gone anywhere, right there still in the pocket. Trying to move up further back out wide is sugar-coated and artificial flowers still inside. Top of the stretch, looks like a two-horse dance here. It's the lovely with the lead. Sand Jester gonna try her in the passing lane here, but it's the lovely, has that lead and is now extending at the line. It's the lovely and Jeff Gregory get the win. Second. It's the lovely is a D fabulous and D fast and she's the daughter of four star shark. She wins easily by two lengths and 152 and one. San Jester got a good trip with Georgie Knapp in the bike, got second money, and then third went to Sugar Coated. Okay, it's time now to go to our correspondent Jen Sherlock and she was going to check on a couple of things. You know, every once in a while we talk about there's a spill in this game, and it's a scary situation. But what about the drivers who have to continue to get back on behind the horses each and every race? It could happen at any time. What are the physical aspects, the psychological aspects of getting back on the bike after you've experienced the spill? With that, here's Jen. Four stars, lefty fell down a bad accident. It can be a brutal sport. Accidents on the racetrack can take their toll on these drivers but somehow they get back on the sulky and do it all over again. Drivers Eric Goodell and Tim Tietrich take the good with the bad when it comes to their job. 
Well, it's just one of those things you just got to put in the back of your mind and not think about it. You know, no matter how hard you hit or how bad you get hurt, you just got to get back on the horse and try it again, you know, and you just got to push it away. Wrecks happen driving horses just like accidents happen for race car drivers. <laughs> it, it, it is scary. You know, we're going 35, 40 mile an hour and, uh, you know, horses fall in front of you. Your horse falls down, you get run over from behind and it can be awful uh, intimidating and scary. Some of the worst wrecks, uh, you know, when you get back into a race um, shortly after, you're a little tentative. You know, if, if you got in a bad wreck and you were hurt bad, you, you know, them things go through your head for quite a while. Uh, I was just in one a couple weeks ago and, you know, still like today racing, you know, you know it's been two or three weeks since. Uh, it's still in the back of your head. Both Goodell and Tietrich have had broken bones in harness wrecks, but they say that just comes with the territory. Broke my uh, ankle. Uh, my foot, um, numerous ribs, um, and other than that, basically just, you know, banged up, bruised up. One day at the Meadowlands in a qualifier, I was following, a horse fell in front of me, and I got slammed to the ground and, you know, uh, cracked a few ribs, but uh, knock on wood, I've really not broke too many bones or, you know, been hurt where I had to sit out a long period of time. I try to stay really, really fit, uh, you know, do a lot of uh, running and cardio and try to be flexible and you learn from from other wrecks in the past uh, what to do. I mean, with experience it kind of helps, but I mean, you're still, you know, what happens is going to happen. I'm Jennifer Sherlock for PA Harness Week. Terrific to report because, you know, these guys, are, they're fairly little guys, they're 1,200-pound animals, they go 40 miles an hour, and it's a psychological nightmare a lot of times, so it's, they're really great to get over this. Good stuff. Okay, Chester's race 10 on Sunday was a goodie, and with that one, here's Heather. Okay, and here we've got star of the game, won this class last time out, is the one to five favorite with Tim Tietrich. Western Avenue won a $15,000 claiming handicap last time out, and then jumps up to this one, which is a $25,000 dollar claiming handicap. He's about eight to one. The rest of the field are bombers. Western Avenue took some bad steps there moving into the far turn. So the star of the game's back to in front. Three quarters in, 123 flat. The field turns for home. Star of the game's an eighth of a mile from home and still a length and a half on top. Western Avenue's trying to re-rally. Best Dream Seeker looks to split rivals. They're coming down to the finish. Star of the game's full out. Here's Western Avenue re-rallying Western Avenue. Jumping this horse up in class, obviously the correct decision. Western Avenue wins in one, 52 and two. Certainly not the easiest trip either. And it even looks like he makes a bobble in the latter part of the race. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to go back 53 years ago to one of the great racetracks in the country for their opening night. It's going to be amazing footage and you won't want to miss it. Stay with us. You are looking up at the lighted glass of the clubhouse entrance facade. It's your big night out and you deserve a little more. That's why you'll love the Downs Off-Track Wagering. It's more than a sports bar. It's extra fun because you can watch, wager, and win on the hottest horse racing action from Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs and across the country. Downs Off-Track Wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg, Hazleton. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, another beer, please.